Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. We will look into electromagnetic force in this chapter. Basically, it talks about how when electricity combined with magnets, they create a force. So in chapter 16, we learned that when current flow in a wire, it creates electricity. So for instance, in a solenoid, when you coil all the wire together and then you turn on a switch, it creates a magnetic field that looks like this. And if you were to uncoil the wire, you get a straight wire. And winding the wire into coil is just a way to concentrate the magnetic field. But if you uncoil it, you will have a straight wire. And when current flows through it, you will have the magnetic field. And one way for us to identify the direction of the magnetic field generated, whether it's clockwise or anticlockwise, is to use a rule called right-hand grip rule. So if um, the thumb here will be the direction which the current is flowing, and all your other fingers will show the direction of the magnetic field generated, just like in this um, device here. So if you look back into this diagram here, you can try to point your finger, your thumb, to the right-hand side, and then you'll find that the direction of the magnetic field is just in front of you. You can see it very clearly, and it's in a, this direction, the magnetic field. So that's how we determine the direction of the magnetic field using a rule called the right-hand grip rule. So some, here are some of the experiment. An experiment to investigate the direction. You can put plotting compasses around a wire, and you will see that they all line up in a way that shows you the direction of the magnetic field generated. So some of the characteristics of the magnetic field generated. So the first one is that further from the wire, like here, as compared to this point, the circular field line are further apart. And this shows that the field is weaker. So if I were to draw it out, so part A and part B, you can see that the field line in part A is a lot further. That means that the magnetic field here is weaker. As compared to B, it will have a stronger magnetic field um, due to the few lines that we, we see here. Okay. The second char characteristic is that if the current is greater, the field line will be stronger. So if you want a stronger magnetic field around the wire, you just have to increase the current. The third direction, um, characteristic, the direction of the field line will be reversed when the current is reversed. So if you can try that out using your right hand, if you point your finger to your thumb towards the right as compared to the left, you are going to get two different um, directions of the magnetic field. So here are some of the characteristics of the magnetic field produced by solenoid instead, which is also um, magnetic field produced by electricity. The field lines that are closer together are the poles of the electromagnetic. They have the strongest magnetic field here. And inside a coil, the line run parallel to each other to show that the field is uniform. And the polarity, which means north and south pole, will be reversed when the direction of current flow is reversed. And some of one of the applications of electromagnetic, as I talked about in the last video, is the relay. So when switch A is closed, a small current flow in a circuit that causes this electromagnetic to magnetize, and it will then attract the iron emitter. And then now the circuit B will be completed. And a relay is basically used to make a small current switch, a large current on and off. So um, we haven't talked about force yet, and that's now is the time. So we know that now magnetic field is generated when there is a current flowing. And what if I were to put in two wire with each other, alongside with each other, and let the current flow? And with this, you can see that we have an interacting magnetic field. So now the internet interacting magnetic field, they either attract to each other or repel each other, just like what we learned in magnetism. So, and this attraction and repulsion creates something called movement. In other words, it creates force. And this is what we call a modal effect. And the definition of modal effect, when current flows in the wire in a magnetic field, which is not parallel to the current in this case, force is exerted on the wire. And some of the um, application is the electric model. So electric motor is basically, they have coil, which current will flows around it, and inside of it, there's a magnet. And we know that current flows create magnetic field, and the, magnet, the magnet also creates magnetic field. And when we have interacting magnetic fields, it creates force, and which causes the electric motor to move. 
and the application is um, the loudspeaker. And there are two experiments that can help you investigate this. So first one is the catapult field experiment in which the current will flow in the wire here. You can see that magnet is also here. And because we have interacting magnetic field, the object here will be force will exert it, will be exerted on this object and it will move. The second experiment is called the rotating coil experiment. And you can see that I have electricity here and also a magnet. And when again, we will have interacting magnetic field that causes the movement of the rotating coil. So that's how it works. And in order to identify in which direction force is exerted, we can use a rule called the flaming left hand rule. It's a rule that gives the relationship between the direction of the force, field, and current. So I'm going to show you how this work in a work example, pass the question. So um, a current carrying wire is placed between two magnetic fields, as shown in the diagram. It experiences an upward force. And they show us also the direction of current. They're asking us what is the orientation of the magnetic pole, meaning which one here is the north and south pole. So um, going back to this flaming left hand rule, do know that in this rule, three fingers here has their respective function. The thumb represent the motion, the force, and the second finger here represent the magnetic field and the middle finger represent the current. So now if you were to do it on my diagram on the screen here, you just point your thumb upwards and then point your middle finger towards yourself because that's where the direction of the current flow. And you will see that the magnetic field finger here is pointing from left to right, okay? So I, my finger is pointing from left to right, meaning that's the field line here. And we know that in, for magnetic field, the north pole will always point to the south pole. It also shows us that, hey, by using flaming left hand rule, I know that the left hand side, the magnet here is the north pole and the right hand side is the south pole. So feel free to just use left hand rule with me in front of the screen and then I believe you'll figure it out. So my answer should be N and S, which is C here. And just don't use the wrong hand because if you use the right hand, you are going to get a different result. So let's move on. So the answer is C. The other question, a current carrying wire is placed into the magnetic field and the wire experience a force. Again, it's the same question with the direction of current flowing upward on the other side instead. So if I were to do this, north to the south, okay, my second finger, index finger, and then my middle finger should point it from to, towards you, okay? And you can see that um, the force here is, my thumb is pointing to the downwards. So which means the force exerted will be OP. So the answer should be A. Okay, so that's how it works, force downwards. Great, so um, that's all about the flaming left hand rule. Let's look into electric motor. So the movement created in the motor effect experiment, the catapult field, you can look up on YouTube to see what it is. I can't really show you here. That's not very really useful because the conductor move out of the field and the effect is over. Therefore, a motor is designed to use the motor effect to create a turning movement. So this is how it works. So this is an a electric motor. Just look at the circuit here. You connect it and you put magnet beside it. And then the current will flow in this direction from positive to terminal. So if you look using flaming left hand rule, force on the left hand side, if you were to apply flaming left hand rule, it, the forces will go up, meaning this part of the catapult field it will move up. Whereas the force on the right hand side, it will move down. So just by looking at this diagram, the movement one, the left hand side will go up, the other one go down, and this will create a turning effect. All right, so to be continued, and when the coil is in vertical shape, there will be no turning effect, and we need to rely on the coil momentum to carry it forward. So now on the other side, the wire on the left and right swap position, meaning now the current will flow again and the left and the upward and downward motions will continue. And to be honest, I can't really show you in a 2D image here. So I would recommend you watch a video by this very good YouTuber that explained perfectly how electric motor work. And I will put the link in the description and you can check it out. So there are two ways to improve the training effect. 
the first one is to increase the current because the car increasing the current will increase the magnetic field which helps us to have bigger effect another thing you can do is to increase the strength of the magnetic field the one is to increase the number of turns of wire because when you increase the number of turns of wire you have more magnetic field so let's look into the next question which of the following would make the core turn more quickly reduce the strength of magnetic field not what we want reversing the direction swapping the magnetic pole not what we want it will just change the direction but not turn quickly swapping and our answer is donkey increasing the current in the coil next one four students are asked to draw the magnetic field the wire is carrying out the page outside of the page so meaning pointing out of the page you can do it with me too using your right hand so we know that we can identify the magnetic field using the right hand grip rule so make sure that your thumb is pointing upwards and you will see that the direction of the current is pointing towards anti-clockwise okay so my answer is b here feel free to try it out with your right hand and the answer is b next one the diagram shows electromagnetic they're asking us what would happen to the magnetic when the current is doubled so more pins will be attracted now because the amount of current has increased. So the answer is A, very straightforward. So last part of the chapter, beams of charged particles. So charged particles, um, a magnetic field can be used to deflect a beam of electrons. So this green color like here is basically showing a beam of electron flowing. So we know that the flow of electrons will create a magnetic field. Therefore, if you put a magnet beside it, you're going to create some movement, either attracting it or repelling it so that's how it works in the figure the electron beam is traveling from left to right and the magnet is placed close to the beam and the magnetic field of the current meaning here it interacts with the magnetic field of the magnet and this caused the electric beam to deflect, get deflected and if you were to reverse this pole of the magnet this electron flow will likely go upwards instead all right because you are creating different polarity and that's about it for this chapter, it's electromotic, uh, electromagnetic force. You can you also see how when electricity combined with magnetism, magnets, um, it creates movement. And that leads us to a lot of intervention like the fan, everything that move, they are probably due to this electromagnetic force. And I think that's about it for this chapter. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.